Hi guys, welcome to Learn Electronics Repair. I have an inverter on my desk here today. You've seen this before, I repaired this before, I just checked. It was back on the 6th of May this year, so that's when I fixed it. And it's come back again, faulty. So it's been out there, June, July, August, September, yeah, six months basically. Now I repaired two inverters from the same place basically at the same time they'd both blown or failed i thought at the time they'd probably been overdriving these so let's just have a look at the previous repair see what i did with this last time and then let's see if the same thing has happened again i've just had a look i'll link that video in the description to this one if you want to take a look but basically some of the fuses had blown that's what was wrong with it let's see if they've done the same thing again so the fuses are inside this. What I find strange, and I mentioned this last time, I'm going to mention it again because it's still strange. They're saying don't open or disassemble the inverter attempting to service the unit yourself may result in blah, blah, blah. Okay. But there's fuses in here. They plug in fuses. And fuses are, by anybody's standard, especially plug in fuses, are user replaceable. Would you not agree? So, yeah, we have a plastic sheet on here. Let's take this off. Okay, full of dust, of course. Why wouldn't it be? Yeah, so you can see four fuses here. There are four more under this bar, but there are four there. There's four more here. So there's 12 fuses in this. I worked out how this works last time. So what we have in here is six switch mode power supplies. The last one's there, you can see. Each one has two fuses, and those switch mode power supplies generate a few hundred volts and charge these capacitors, okay? Those are the switching MOSFETs for the power supplies and the rectifier diodes. So now we have some, I don't know, is it 300 volts or whatever it was? Maybe, I think it was more like 400 volts DC, okay? And then, these along here, these are MOSFETs again, and these chop that up into effectively a square wave. They were working in pairs effectively, so like they're switching the polarity backwards and forwards, and you get basically an AC square wave thing at 50 hertz or thereabouts, and that is your 220 volts, yeah. 220 volts AC has a peak voltage of about 320, which is why I think this goes up to 380 or something like that. There's a fuse on that side, on the high voltage side as well, which is also under there. So let's just take this off. Okay, so we see fuses here. There's three of them. Yeah. Looks like there should be four, but in fact there's only three. Yeah. I don't believe one's actually just disappeared, okay. And then these are the fuses which had blown or some of them last time, okay. Let's check them all. That's okay. 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 Mm-hmm. Well, they all read okay. They read okay. It looks like it's not the same problem this time, at least. Yeah. The other problem I think I had with this one last time, if my memory serves me correctly, was this switch. Yeah. On off switch, didn't work. And that's now okay. 
So let's power this thing up and see what it does. I have this connected to my bench power supply. This is the 5 amp supply. I've set it to about 13.5 volts. The switch on this is off at the moment. Okay, let's see. So it draws some amps while it's charging the capacitors. This is on. It says 13.8, that's the input voltage. Uh, it's drawing not a lot. As you can see, the fans have just shut down again. So let's test it with a load now to do that we need to have quite a lot of current coming in so if you think about this if that is 12 volts input basically and this is 240 volts out basically for every amp on the output you need 20 amps on the input yeah i'm not going to load it to one amp i'll connect a light bulb to it so it's only like 70 something watts but even so at 70 watts we need quite a lot of input current i'll use my 20 amp supply and that can easily drive this i would say but it seems to be working all right i've connected a light bulb this is 72 watts which doesn't sound like a lot but again to step the voltage up we need to have more current on this side and at 13.5 volts that is about 5.3 amps if this was a hundred percent efficient so this is providing 72 watts this is drawing 72 watts but it's not going to be 100 percent efficient so this is going to be more than that okay and my five amp supply wouldn't be suitable for this so we power it up okay we switch it on light bulbs on 84 80 5 watts, 84 watts. Okay, so that is working. Uh, that works. This is another use for a higher powered power supply. I mean, obviously a 10 amp one would do this, but if you want to drive this with a bit of welly, yeah, you're going to need quite a lot of amps. Okay. I'll have to ask the customer what's going on with this because obviously he's not brought it in working. It wasn't working. But I've done nothing, just tested it and yeah, it works. This is another one of these A, very short videos and B, instance of do I charge the guy? Yeah, this is Handy Andy from the local phone shop. It doesn't belong to him. He probably will charge the customer. He may have gone out to him or the customer may have brought it into his shop. So, yeah, I'll speak to him about it. He's kind of an associate. Yeah, he's done me some favours. I've needed stuff for my phone, so maybe it's a mate's thing. But I'll ask him, Luke, what do you want to do? But at the end of the day, the guy brought it in for some reason. I would suggest that they disconnect the loads, power it up without any load, see that it's coming on. If it isn't, then there's a problem with the batteries or the solar panels or something on that side. And if it works without a load, switch the appliances that they're running. I'm sure there's more than one from this. Switch them on one at a time and see what it does. Yeah, can't come up with a better answer than that one. You guys, down there. It's the weekend, so hey, that'll do for me. It's Friday. And I hope you enjoyed the discussion, even though it wasn't really a repair. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all soon again on Learn Electronics Repair. Ciao for now, guys.